Welcome back. In this part, we start doing the groundwork to handle game over. We are also going to write some code that can detect checkmate and stalemate. As we saw last time, checkmate happens when a player is in check and has no legal moves to get out of it. In this example, the black king is threatened by the white bishop. And no move can get black out of check. So black is checkmated and white wins. It's also possible that a player cannot make any moves without currently being in check. Here the white king is not in check, but it has no legal moves. This situation is called a stalemate and it results in a draw. Ok, let's close these tabs and get started. We want the game state to detect when the game ends. It should also store the reason why, so we can display it on the screen. To support this, let's add an enum called end reason. A game can end because one player checkmates the other or because of a stalemate. These are the two reasons we'll handle in this part. But later we'll also handle the 50 move rule, insufficient material, and threefold repetition. Now we can create a class called result. It stores the winning player, or player.none in case of a draw. And then the reason why the game ended. The constructor will take in these values. and store them. I'll also create two convenient methods for creating a result. One for a win, it takes the winning player and returns a new result containing that player. and the checkmate reason. The other method creates a draw result with some reason. This time we return a result with winner set to player none. and the given reason. Great! Now we are ready to add endgame information to the game state. First, let's add a result property. Initially it is null, but when the game ends, we'll store an actual result here. 
To detect checkmate and stalemate, we need a method which generates all moves the current player can make. Here we'll create a variable for all candidate moves. To get them, we consider all positions containing a piece belonging to the player. And then, using select many, we collect the moves for each piece. This gives us a collection containing all moves the player can make, including the illegal ones. We only want legal moves, so let's filter out the illegal ones. At this point, we can write a method called check for game over. It will be called at the end of every turn, after the current player has been switched. If the new player does not have any legal moves. Then the game is certainly over. But is it a checkmate or a stalemate? If the current player is in check, Then he is checkmated, and the other player has won. Otherwise, if the current player is not in check, then we have a stalemate, and the game ends with a draw. Perfect. We need to call this method after each move has been made. So let's go to make move and call it here. Finally, we can add a method called is game over. The game is over if result has been set. So we return true if result is not equal to null. Great. Now our game state can detect when the game is over, either because of checkmate or stalemate. There is no nice endgame UI yet, but let me show you that it works. I'll set a breakpoint in both the checkmate and stalemate case. And then start the game in debug mode. In this state, if I move the bishop up here, then black should be in checkmate. The resulting state is the example I showed you earlier. Let's try. We have hit the breakpoint for the checkmate case. Great. Here's another state. If I move the black king one square down, then the resulting state is the stalemate example from the beginning of this video. White is not in check, but cannot move anywhere. Let's see what happens. We hit the breakpoint for the stalemate case. Awesome. 
The next step is to make the UI display this information when the game ends. So in the next part, we start working on a game over menu. See you then.